Tron Legacy was a bit of a mixed bag for a lot of people. I know some who adore it, and some who abhor it, and like the 80s cult classic on which it's based, it's developed a reputation for its spectacular special effects, but not for much else. However, that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Today, I wanted to talk about some of the storytelling ideas and themes presented in Tron Legacy, and what we can learn from them to craft better stories going forward. Whether you think Legacy used these ideas correctly in its story or not, there is no denying that there is some conceptual gold hidden in this film that can be extrapolated and applied with more depth and nuance for inspiration in films going forward. And I'm not just talking about the premise of a man entering the world inside a computer. Even though Matrix might have done that concept better, or at least popularized it, the concept was used in 1982's Tron well before 1999's The Matrix refined it. No, today I wanted to talk about something a little more abstract. Tron Legacy's philosophical storytelling concepts. What do I mean by this? Well, to start, let's analyze the grid and the laws that govern how that world works, and I'll show you what I mean. The grid is a fully realized digital world inside a computer, and much like the Matrix, it works pretty much like the real world, with the exception of some very crucial differences. Unlike the Matrix, the grid is created to be wholly self-sufficient, meaning that the presence of human beings is not required for it to function. Artificially intelligent programs, created by Kevin Flynn, live completely intelligent, independent lives, and function in the society of the grid much in the same way that we function as a part of the greater whole in this world. This opens up a whole new can of worms that I am sad to say Tron Legacy does not cover as well as the 1982 film. And this is where most of the potential for great storytelling lies. The television show Tron Uprising expands the physical universe of the grid and how it functions excellently, and I highly recommend watching it if you get the chance. It's truly a fantastic show that was cancelled far too soon. However, for right now, let's just focus on some of the more ethereal concepts presented in the film and the world of the grid. Kevin Flynn created this system from the ground up as a new world independent of the one in the 1982 film. Kevin created everything in the grid, apart from Tron himself. Users, humans from the real world who enter the system, are revered by the programs as gods. User. Which in their case, they pretty much are. And Kevin is not just any user, he is THE creator. But the movie glosses over this. Imagine the potential impact that this could have on a story. Kevin is the digital universe's god, but we never see him creating anything or anyone except for Clue. You are Clue. I am Clue. More on that later. Except for the stated reason of Clue's rebellion and one brief shot of a program bowing in reverence as her creator passes by, Kevin's status in the grid is a concept that is never truly explored. Imagine what would happen if we saw him manipulating the world that he originally created. The visual concept is unprecedented. Now, here's where we get into the really cool concepts. When Kevin created the grid, he was playing God. But unlike an actual deity, Kevin is a flawed human being messing with things he doesn't quite understand. He has all the power and none of the wisdom or omniscience. This, of course, is reflected in his creation. In the film, it's touched on as seeking perfection. Kevin wanted to create a utopia inside the computer, but failed to realize that this was impossible. Until the ISOs came into existence. The isomorphic algorithms were a wake-up call that Kevin was not in full control. 
They were spontaneous new programs that he did not create, and whose code was pieced together from bits and pieces of the system he created, but not wholly a part of it. Kevin is rightfully humbled at the possibilities their existence presents, and what digital secrets, or by extension genetic, if they were brought into our world, these ISOs could hold. And I'll save this concept for another video, but right now, I wanted to focus on the impact this had on Kevin. The wake-up call unfortunately came too late. Kevin created Clue before he realized that seeking perfection was futile for humans, and an endless task. Created in Kevin's own image, including all of Kevin's flawed human reasoning, Clue was a program set apart, a piece of the creator, if you will. And like the devil is to God in Judeo-Christian beliefs, Clue was the created being who sought to be as great as the creator. He took the concept of the perfect system too far, and saw the ISOs as an unplanned imperfection that needed to be eliminated. In addition, it's revealed that Clue cannot create his own programs. After all, he is just a very advanced program himself, and he can only reprogram, repurpose, or twist what Kevin had already created. And what's even more fascinating about this scenario is that not only does Clue want to be like Kevin Flynn, but he also wants Kevin Flynn to be proud of him. He has a desire to be wanted and needed by the one that created him. And when the ISOs came along, he felt rejected, as if his purpose to create the perfect system wasn't good enough or wasn't what was needed. This is all brought to a head when Kevin Flynn sacrifices himself to defeat Clue and let his son escape. It can be seen as an allegory for Kevin seeing the dark side of himself and cutting it off. The desire to create the perfect system, taking precedence over his son, is finally eliminated. In that act of defeating Clue, Kevin takes that dark side of himself and sacrifices it. And if these god-devil comparisons weren't enough, they even have a Christ allegory in the form of Sam Flynn. Unlike Clue, he's an actual user, the son of the creator. He even comes to save the grid from Clue's tyranny. Are you seeing the parallels? Now, I understand that for a lot of people, there just wasn't enough time spent on these concepts, and that some people felt the film's story was a bit shallow. But for me, I see the fascinating concepts for what they are. Pure conceptual gold. Now, I might be biased because I absolutely love this movie, but I still think there is a lot of useful stuff to be found in the ideas at the core of this film. And even if the only use for them is to learn and create better stories in the future, then that's enough for me. After all, I created this series to show people the fascinating ideas I've found in movies, even from films that might not be that popular, because I truly believe that there's always something new we can learn from anything. I fight for the users.